you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Secretary, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Um, how many individuals in your department have a purchase card? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know off the top of my head. All right. But I'll be happy to get you the information. Okay. Um, according to the governor's executive budget book, you had loaned the purchasing fund about $92 million. Um, what was the purpose of that loan? Uh, forgive me, Representative. I'll have to get you the details. I, I really am not familiar with what you're saying, with what okay. you're talking about. So within each department, certain employees have what's called a purchase card. It's a credit card yes. that they use to purchase. <laughs> I know what that is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so according to your budget book, there was a $92 million loan. So we, I would like to know what that was for um, when you get it, what those purchases were. Um, over that time, over that time span, we'll if do. you could, if you could backlog it back to the previous fiscal year, and uh, just let us know differences between that. The, the sure. Two. Just to be clear, Representative, do you, do you believe that it, that the ninety-two million dollar uh, figure is somehow associated with the purchasing card population? Uh, usually, usually it's the purchasing fund. Um, usually, usually the purchasing fund. How how the explanation in my many, many meetings with Treasury um, has been that the um, when an entity takes money out on the purchase card, there is an accounting set up um, that goes through the purchasing fund, and then um, the, I believe the comptroller, either of your entity or within the budget office, will eventually reconcile that with Treasury to pay it back. So 92 seemed a little higher than, than average, and obviously we had a budget impasse, so forth, so if you just could provide some data on what those transactions were. Got it. Yes. Uh, for the record, the purchasing fund uh, supports more than just the population of procurement cards okay. uh, within the enterprise. Um, our Bureau of Publications, uh, our, Bureau, our Bureau of Vehicle Management, um, and I believe portions of our Bureau of uh, Supplies and Surplus uh, all operate out of the purchasing fund, and all of them. Uh, and this is this is important because it's relatively unique within state government. All of those operations are required uh, to uh, b basically to run in the black. Uh, so all of those operations bill the other agencies for the services that they provide. Um, they get their operating capital from the purchasing fund, mm -hmm. and we watch it pretty closely to make sure that uh, we restore every dollar to the purchasing fund uh, by virtue of those ongoing operations. Of other departments, okay. That's, that's, that's correct. good to hear. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there was the General Assembly enacted a law, at least for the purchase cards, that Treasury didn't have pre-audit, correct? They would do, they would do post-audit on the procurement cards, at least. Yeah. Uh, Representative, we're a little bit out of my uh, jurisdiction here. I believe it's the Office of the Budget uh, that manages the, the procurement card program. They do. It was, yeah. it was, it was changed before right. this administration got in. You were in there, so we can move on. <laughs> um, the go time initiatives, uh, I, I believe the, the, the chairman was hitting on them. Um, obviously, the governor's goal is to save $150 million this fiscal year on that. Um, why, do, why do the projects that were completed for cost savings not show up in the individual budget book? Um, and we have a list. You submitted a list. We mm -hmm. appreciate that. We always appreciate efficiencies looking for cost savings. But why aren't they connected to any specific line item? And why do they not show up as um, kind of a subtraction within the governor's budget book to show mm -hmm. we've saved this amount of money, we have reduced costs? I, uh, thank you, Representative. I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, and uh, uh, if you'll allow me to, so it, this might be a bit of a long explanation, but mm -hmm. let, let, let me try to. Yeah. Uh, uh, help, help there. Um, you know, this year, uh, uh, if you look at that $150 million goal overall, uh, my our department is responsible for roughly two thirds of it, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the the vast majority of it is to come from changes within the way we do procurement and the application of strategic sourcing and reverse auction tools uh, to the way that we we work. Um, DGS. Uh, is 
sort of resides in a, in a relatively unique position within state government in that um, we, we buy lots of things um, mm -hmm. and we build buildings and we lease cars and we do any number of things in, you know, to support the operations of the government. Um, but we're not really spending our own money. Um, when you think about it, we're, we're, which is to say that uh, it's all taxpayer money, of course, mm -hmm. but we are, uh, mechanically, we are spending on behalf of uh, the agencies that we serve. Um, so thus far this year, we've done, uh, we've identified roughly $70 million in annualized savings. Um, uh, and that's through uh, 14 reverse auctions and more than 50 projects involving the application of more traditional procurement methods. Um, there have been some delays, but I think we're on track to get to the 100 million uh, before the end of the year. Um, why, do, why can't we identify every dime uh, within the budget? <clears throat> um, well, it's difficult to measure. Um, and it's difficult to measure for a number of reasons. First and foremost, I think it's difficult to measure because the question almost presupposes that we have a budget for the current year, uh, which we don't. Um, uh, let, me, so let me ask you that. Um, if you go to the governor's budget.gov, governor's budget page, it says enacted budget 15-16. That's your secretary, your budget secretary, says enacted budget 2015-2016, correct? Did um, you look at that? Uh, Representative, I'm, I'm not sure which page you're referring to, but... Website. Um, but I, it's, it seems website. to me that we can... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, rather than get into a semantics debate, which okay. neither one of us will win... Um, well, well, I'm maybe, pretty uh, sure I voted for a budget. You're getting a GG, is your GGOs being paid through the Treasury right now? My, my GGO is being paid through the Treasury. How'd yes. that happen? Uh, but it is not true for the entire enterprise well, that we have a budget. because the governor vetoed a boatload of funding to school districts. Now they have junk bonds. I mean, uh, we passed a budget. Actually, we passed two budgets. Quite honestly, Representative, it, it, if, if you'd like me to answer the question, Go ahead. I'd be pleased to do that. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make a point that we have a budget. Um, so back to your question, mm -hmm. why can't we identify the savings? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a complex undertaking. Um, uh, even if we had a completed budget, um, those purchases and those savings are amassed via literally thousands of purchase orders and P card transactions mm -hmm. across the entire enterprise, mm -hmm. um, across roughly, you know, four and a half to five billion dollars worth of uh, purchasing tra transactions in any given year. Um, the savings are typically derived from lower prices compared with the prices that were paid the prior year. Mm -hmm. That's how we calculate that $70 million. Um, they may also involve lower prices uh, than, uh, than were anticipated due to market conditions. So for example, uh, uh, road salt. Um, we conducted a very successful road salt sourcing event this year, and uh, we achieved pricing that was equivalent to costs um, that uh, was roughly 10 uh, I think just over $10 million less expensive uh, than what we anticipated within the market. The entire market was up 10 to 15 percent mm -hmm. uh, because of the winter that we had previously. Yeah. Um, so it's common within procurement and sourcing. Yeah. Let, let me ask you there, that, that $10 million in savings, uh, obviously you did the purchasing, PennDOT would reimburse you for that purchase. What line item did PennDOT use to do that purchase of salt? Sure, so technically they, we would not pay for the purchase ourselves. Mm -hmm. We put the contract vehicle in place and then PennDOT would directly work with the contract, cut a purchase order and, and then and make their purchase. Would that be um, ma their maintenance? Do you, know, do you know what line item that is? Uh, it, it, we can identify where all of the purchase orders against the road salt contracts are within the system, and we'd be happy to give you that information. So you can identify the savings? We can identify where the expenses are. Um, 
If you can identify the expenses, you can identify the savings, so you can identify the line items that came from, so within your budget book, you can subtract it out, and that $150 million now doesn't need to be tax increases. So it, it would be nice if it worked that way, but it doesn't. Um, uh, Why so, doesn't it? So within Government that works. Sure. Make it work. Sure. So within operating funds, um, agency budgets aren't fixed at the level of discrete expense categories. That's just not how the Commonwealth's accounting system works. Um, so if you reduce the cost of a purchase order, mm -hmm. it doesn't automatically result in stranded funds that can't be used for something else. Mm -hmm. And because agency operating funds have been under such immense pressure overall over the course of the last four or five years, um, agencies move quickly uh, to, to repurpose those savings in order to make ends meet and in order to maintain their operations. So they're um, mostly being spent forward. The savings are being spent forward in other areas. They are, um, and, and because, it's, because it's being spent out of necessity. Um, agencies may also, re, they may also reprioritize um, and they may forego certain purchases. Uh, and when they forego those purchases, in favor of making another purchase or in favor, or they may just be out of money because the, because uh, the operating budgets have, have gotten so slim. Um, so we may project savings um, that ultimately doesn't materialize because the transactions, the, the purchases aren't actually executed. Um, so, uh, you know, basically our job at DGS is to deliver as many lower cost alternatives as we can deliver, as quickly as we can deliver them. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the agencies uh, that uh, are responsible for managing their own budgets and managing their own mission um, using the tools that we provide for them. Uh, but uh, we, uh, uh, we're not in the accounting business um, at DGS. Everyone's in the accounting business in government, everyone. Every dollar must be accounted for, correct? Oh, well, yes, sir, yes. Uh, but there is a, there's a reasonable division of labor within our enterprise in just the same way that there is in any large enterprise. But here's the issue. If the administration is coming out and saving, saying we're saving $150 million, and you, you can't measure and you can't verify it. I, I can. Are, I can. So, I, so I, you can please. measure and verify it, but those savings you can't identify in the budget books uh, because they're not measurable. It sounds like we're having a very circular argument. Uh, well, I, I don't think it's circular at all. I, I think you're just insisting that apples are oranges, and they're not. They're not. So the no. savings aren't actually savings because the savings you're talking about are apples, and in reality, they're really oranges. Uh, what I'm talking about is the savings. I, I would love to invite you down. You can sp you, you come on down, spend a day with us, and we'll walk you through all of the details in all of the models that that basically demonstrate the the real cost reductions that have been achieved in every one of those contracts and in every one of those reverse auctions. And they're real dollars. They are real dollars. Real dollars that we can account for. They are real dollars that likely have been spent. So, but but at one point, they were real yes. dollars that were saved. Correct. Yes, of course. Correct. Now, spending them is not under your purview, correct? That would be the purview of PennDOT, whatever entity you're saving them for, yeah. correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That actually is the most clarifying explanation of how go time money has already been spent, I have heard to date. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr.